Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to see how difficult it can be to determine the luminosity of a star. Now what does that mean? What does luminosity mean? Well, it's kind of like brightness but not quite. When we look at a star and we say, wow, look how bright it looks, we're not just talking about luminosity, we're talking about how much light it puts out, how much visible light it puts out. And luminosity is really a measurement of how much total energy the star puts out. And notice that the star typically, or any star typically, will put out energy in UV, visible light, and infrared radiation. So when we talk about the brightness of the star, we typically are talking about how much visible light it puts out and how bright it looks towards us. Now we have, of course, apparent brightness. How bright does it appear to us? Because a very dim star that's really close to us will look very bright, and a very bright star that's very far from us will look very dim. So when we talk about brightness, we typically talk about the visible light portion of the emission, electromagnetic emission of a star. A star can also put out UV and infrared, and for some of the very bright uh, bluish stars, most of the energy a star puts out is in the UV, and only a small amount comes out in the visible light and infrared. So when we talk about luminosity, we talk about all of the energy, all three of the bands, UV, visible, and infrared radiation, that the star puts out. So how do we determine the luminosity? You can see that simply looking at it or measuring it with a light meter is not sufficient because it will not pick up all of the radiation coming from the star. We need to pull out all of the radiation. Another big problem that we have with trying to find the luminosity of stars is understanding the difference between the absolute luminosity and the apparent luminosity. With other words, the star may appear luminous, but we need to figure out how far the star is from us before we actually can determine how luminous it actually is. What is the actual luminosity of the star? How much energy does it put out? And again, that can be very difficult to determine. But we did, have, we did find out a mass luminosity relationship. We do know that the luminosity of a star often has to do with how much mass it has, especially when we talk about a main sequence star. On the main sequence star, we realize that if we determine where on the main sequence the star appears, we can then determine how much mass it has. And from that, we should be able to find a mass luminosity relationship. Notice that the general relationship is that the luminosity of a star relative to the luminosity of the sun, if it's brighter, it's bigger than one. If it's not as bright, it's less than one, is equal to some constant times the ratio of the mass of the star divided by the mass of the, sun, of the sun and that quantity to some exponent. And then we realize that that relationship varies depending upon how much mass the star has. And we've been able to classify it in, two general, in, in four different equations depending upon the mass. We have an equation if the mass of the star is greater than 20 times the mass of the sun. We have an equation that's different when the star has a mass between 2 and 20 times the mass of the Sun. We have another equation when the mass of the star is between 0.43 and 2 times the mass of the Sun. And then finally we have a fourth equation when the mass is less than 0.43 times the mass of the Sun. And remember, of course, that there's no star that can have less than 0.08. So 0.08 times the mass of the Sun is the smallest main sequence star that can exist. Any star smaller than that will not produce enough pressure at the center of the star to get the temperature up to 10 million degrees Kelvin to get nuclear fusion started, and then it becomes what we call a failed star or a brown dwarf where no nuclear fusion takes place. So, in the case when the, when the mass of the star is less than 0.43 times the mass of the sun, of course, then greater than, than 0.08 times the mass of the sun, the equation is that the ratio of the luminosity is equal to the ratio of the mass raised to the 2.3 power. Then we can see that the mass, the, the mass luminosity relationship changes. There's a different slope to the curve, and therefore between 0.43 times the mass of the sun and 2 times the mass of the sun, so stars that are fairly similar to the sun, the equation becomes the relationship between the luminosity is about equal to the relationship of the mass to the fourth power. Then when we talk about the bigger stars, stars bigger than Vegas and Sirius, which are now in the range from 2 to 20 times the mass of the Sun, the, the, the relationship changes to the ratio of the luminosity of the star to the luminosity of the Sun is about equal to 1.5 times the ratio of the masses to the 3.5 power. And finally, for any stars greater than 20 times the mass of the Sun, which is a very rare type of star, there's not very many stars with that kind of mass, it's simply 3,200 times the ratio of the mass of the star divided by the mass of the 
of the sun, and that gives you the luminosity relationship. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and calculated it for the limiting cases. So we can see that going from 0 0.08 to 0 0.43 times the mass of the sun, that means that the luminosity is less than 1 1,000 the luminosity of the sun to about one-third the luminosity of the sun within that range. For stars from 0.43 times the mass of the sun to 2 times the mass of the sun, the luminosity ranges for about a third to about 16 times the luminosity of the sun. For stars from 2 times the mass of the sun to 20 times the mass of the sun, the luminosity is about from 17 to 54,000 times the mass, the luminosity of the sun. Imagine 54,000 times as much luminosity of the sun. And then for stars that are more than 20 times the size of the sun, it would then be greater than 64,000. Note there's a little bit of a mismatch here between the two equations. There's kind of a, a jump, which is of course not normally the case, but the equations don't quite mesh at this particular limit. But you can see anywhere from 50 to 60,000 times the mass of the sun by the time the star is about 20 times the mass of the sun. Notice that this is only for main sequence stars. When we have stars that are like giants that are much larger in size relative to their mass, they may have greater luminosity relative to their mass and that relationship then of course doesn't work. We have to work with different kinds of uh, ways to determine the luminosity. But this is kind of nice because we have now ways using filters and using various ways to determine where exactly the star belongs on the main sequence based upon the spectral type and the spectral lines and the, the light coming through various UBV filters. We can place it on the main sequence fairly accurately and then we can have a fairly good representation of what the mass of that star has to be and then based upon that and using these equations we can get fairly close to that luminosity of that star and even though it's not exactly uh, an exact science so to speak, although uh, this is science, but what I'm trying to say is that the number you get will have a fair amount of uncertainty in it, but it gives us at least some ballpark range of what the luminosity of the stars is by using these techniques. So again, in astronomy, it's always a struggle to find accurate numbers of anything, and the more ways we have to measure the same thing, the closer we can actually get to the actual value, and in this case, the determination of how of what the luminosity of stars is. So this is a really good start. This at least gives you an idea of what the mass luminosity luminosity relationship is and how we calculate it for various stars with various masses on the main sequence. And that's how we do that.